my bad, y'all. I didn't have my uh, phone, uh, <laughs> my headphones plugged in. Jay Sproul, Movies, Music, Sports, and Life. Do you like what I've done with the place? Uh, anyway, y'all don't care where I'm at, but uh, this is a space that uh, I rented out. And um, it wasn't for the purpose of doing my my final power book two ghost breakdown. Uh, but it just conveniently, uh, I just finished up the meeting that I had in the conference room via Zoom, so I figured why not uh, go ahead and knock out this review, man. So let's get into it, man. Um, I said I'm going to try to keep this to 15 minutes because I didn't get good views on my last one, and I think it was because I was like at 19, 20 minutes. So I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible. Um and you know what? We'll we'll start from the end. The, I feel like the only way that I can keep it short as possible is if I go straight to the end and you know and not try to beat around the bush and then I can work my way back to the other stuff that I thought was funny. But let's start with the the end credit scene. So I really thought that Braden was going to turn down the offer. Because it's like basically saying, yeah, Bray, you can keep working for me, but there's no more partnership. I'm the boss because you keep messing up. Like, what incentive are you giving me to keep moving drugs for you? Like, how much of a wigger wannabe <laughs> do you have to be that you want to be a part of this lifestyle so badly? Like, it gets to the point where it kind of doesn't make sense. But he survived. I know a lot of y'all predicted that Braden was not going to make it out of this thing alive, but he survived, so he's going to be there. So then you cut from that to uh, Tariq getting a phone call, and then he says, yeah, well, tell them such and such to bring it, yeah, and, 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 and we're going to bring it back. We're going to answer the challenge. Dude, that was Tommy. Come on, man. Is, is, is anybody else... He said, he said, especially, he said, I haven't heard from you in a while. He said, and you know we family. That was Tommy. So, the two people that died, <laughs> sadly, are inconsequential to the power universe. As fine as Noma is, you saw I put her on my thumbnail, as fine as Noma is, and as beautiful as her daughter was, and I really, I really kind of, it kind of hurt me how viciously she got taken out. Them dying does not impact the power verse. Carter still being alive impacts it. Um, Tariq, Kane, and Effie, and Brayden, all surviving impacts it. Y'all all predicted Method Man was going to get off, but Davis surviving impacts it. So, we're just going to kind of put that off the table for a second. Because what this episode did, it really... Oh, yeah, and Diana. Of course, that's very, very important that Diana survived. But putting that off, nothing about this final episode really gives you a whole lot about the spin-offs. I think that's still further down the line in development. It seems pretty clear that Kane is going to get his own show. Even though they didn't really point to that in this episode, he's a fan favorite. You know, as a few of my fellow YouTubers uh, like to say, he, he's, he's a hit with the ladies. The ladies love Kane. And he's a good actor. I, I think he was given some weak lines to spit over the years with Power Book 2 Ghost. But if he had better script writing, I think that you would respect him as an actor more than you may do or may not. But it's clear. I think Diana, Effie, those are characters that might not be strong enough that there's really a demand for them. But... Tate didn't get a single appearance to talk about getting revenge for his brother. So 
I think that force influence might be back on the table, possibly. However, I say all of that. I'm just going all over the road to say that all this episode did was set up the final season of Power Book 4, Force. And I will go on the record. You guys know that is by far my least favorite uh, book in power. It's just trash, man. And I know it's not their fault because it was supposed to be power L.A. Tommy was supposed to be in L.A. But just nothing about Force moves me. The The only thing that moved me was uh, Eliana, the Hispanic, uh, the Latino chick with the scar on her face. I thought she was so loyal to Tommy and she was such an interesting character. Outside of that force just doesn't do anything for me. <laughs> Until now. Because that's who he was on the phone with. He was talking to Tommy. And he already stated that he can't be in New York because it's too hot. And I think Atlanta would just be... Man, I'm so tired of my city, Atlanta, just being portrayed in, with crime. Ugh. That would just irk me so much. But... Tariq going to Chicago makes Force infinitely more interesting. And uh, so, yeah, so whereas before, when they announced Powers coming back, Power Force, I wasn't even going to watch it. Didn't even care that it was the final episode. But now that it's, I mean, the final season. But now that it's the final season of Force and Tariq will be there. It makes it completely interesting to now that we can see once that season is over with, now we get a chance to figure out if Michael Rainey Jr. is really done with power and wants to move on to other stuff. That's what he said, but it's starting to feel less likely that that's going to happen. If they, get, if they get good ratings with Tyreek on force, he ain't going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? The, the money's just going to be uh, too much. Um, okay, so we'll get into the episode. I'll give myself another eight minutes. Episode starts off with the interrogation. Get the phone call from Davis. Uh, Monet is dead. They're all tripping off Monet being dead. The kids are at home. I knew somebody was going to start uh, blaming each other and say, you're the reason Monet's dead. But the the, the writers and directors get a good did a good job. Instead of turning on each other, they all kind of accepted some responsibility and it just all got down to the fact that we need to avenge her. You know, we're not the enemy here. The people who killed her are the enemy, so we need to get no man her people. Um, Carter is a master manipulator. He was talking crazy to Tariq. You know, like, um, how do you do it? H how do you manage to uh, kill unintentionally everybody that's around you. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that's a question that we all ask ourselves at home right about Tyreek. Um, did y'all see how crazy his eyes got? <laughs> I think I think uh, Tariq said Denise like three times and the first time his mouth was like this. The third time he was like don't ever say her name again. <laughs> Dog, Michael Ely looks so crazy. <laughs> Man, he is a good actor. Uh, and then he said something about Luke's and the kid. He said, too soon? <laughs> I wish I wish they just didn't have Michael Ely having Carter just be a prick the whole time. I wish they would have gave him more stuff to be funny like that. Because he... <laughs> He was pretty funny. Uh, basically, Tyreek was out of his league. He don't know how to intimidate. He don't know how to integrate, uh, interrogate. He punching and, you know, little weak hands. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, there's just nothing convincing about him in that situation. Uh, Noma finally tells Anya about the Nigerian mob. Why would you give Anya a head start to run? With a threat, I'll drag you out of here if I have to. That I saw Kane had the do rag on. I knew that was Black Air Force energy. 
They started playing the drill music immediately. So they take her hostage. They kept Dirk's acting to a minimum. I, I swear, Lil Dirk must be terrible. They say, hey, man, we're going to have you shoot this gun. We're going to have you say, all right, then, love. But, yeah, just don't talk. Um, Tariq says, I'm sorry for your loss. And, you know, that's the way gangsters show respect. But if you know anything about the Tejadas, when they showed up to his dad's funeral, the other gangs, they had envelopes full of money. And, you know, it's, it's considered a sign of respect. So that's why Kane said, hey, man, this is just words. What y'all going to do about it? So if you're not going to bring no money to the table, you got to bring some action. You know what I'm saying? In, in the streets. Uh, yeah, I, I know. Look at me. The, 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 the square. The square from the north side of Milwaukee who teaches school and wears ties talking to you about the streets. But it is what it is, man. Um, I was in the middle of it. I just didn't participate. You know, I, I, I lost people behind the streets. So um, I look at it as gangster that I'm doing what I do and that I didn't fall by the wayside and, and fall to the system like some of my uncles and cousins did. Um, Drew goes to Nico. There's no way in the world. Y'all know Detective Carter is a captain, right? There's no way anybody is letting someone sit in the captain's office without being monitored. Like, that was so crazy. Um, Nico is figuring out that Carter killed Kamal. He's just not saying nothing. You know, silence can be golden sometimes. Like, my my grandfather always told me, never let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. You know, he's in his 90s and always gives me jewels and wisdom. But um, Nico had a suspicion, but he was becoming more and more convinced with the way Carter was moving. Um... I don't know about y'all, but Diana was dead vicious. She gave that pretty little girl, Anya, five shots. And all five of them seemed like they hurt. And I don't know about y'all, but it was like she was turning into Monet in front of our eyes. She was completely unbothered. By how she let that let that wild thing loose on Anya and just tore her little body up, her little cute haircut just just tore it all up. And uh, when they were complaining at her about what she did, and they said, and then you didn't even kill uh, Noma. What was the point of doing that if you didn't kill Noma? She said that B ain't going nowhere. She gonna want revenge now. She sounded just like Monet when she said that. I was like, God. Um, another funny moment. <laughs> they had they had Detective Carter surrounded, and I can't even remember what Braden said. But it was like he looked at him like, I know this little privileged white boy didn't say nothing. And Detective Carter just said, shut up before I smack the ish out of you. <laughs> Even with a gun in his hand. Like, he, he was not intimidated at all. So they got the bullet. I missed the part when they got the bullet. Nico's extra dramatic. Um... Our guy, Carter, goes to jail. Um, Noma's mad at her brother for turning on her. And he says, ha! Like, just so Nigerian the way he said, ha! And kept going. Uh, Noma sent the police. And it backfired. And uh, Kane caught her. And just let me say, she got rocked. Like, bam! And she's so beautiful, but she's going to go on. And then the final thing I'll say 
is that uh, F- Effie made me cry, y'all. Like, I, I don't know why that was so emotional to me. Maybe it's because she's, like, so pretty and she was looking so sad. But she is so loyal, y'all. You know, like, you just don't understand. Like, she is such a loyal chick. And they didn't mess up the scene by getting overly lovey-dovey and Kane saying I love you and kiss her on the lips. She just kissed her on the forehead. And she just gave up everything that she was going to need to pay for Stanford so that he could get out of here. And uh, I don't know why, man. I, I just got kind of emotional the way she was standing there looking and thinking about what she sacrificed so that Kane could have a chance to create a new life for himself. Movies, music, sports, and life. Jace Brew.